Now, welcome back to Calling It. I'm Enda Call. So Celtic play Ferenc Varos in the second round qualifier of the Champions League tomorrow night. Kickoff is at 7.45. It is a home fixture, but of course, there are no fans there. So it's a little bit more disappointing that Celtic fans can't get to this game. So we'll start off with the Hungarian champions. Who are they? Well, they are, as I said, Hungarian champions. They beat Jurgarden from Sweden to get to this stage. And they played in the Europa League last year. They were in probably the most Europa League group of all time. They had Espanyol, Ludogorezk and CSK Moscow in their group. They only got seven points. They drew four of their games, won one and lost one as well. So they finished on seven points, didn't get to the knockout stage. But according to the Hungarian journalists, that is actually quite a good feat for them. It's not something that they expected. And their European form was slightly better than their uh, league form as well. So they were surprising and they were surprised enough to be getting seven points on the, on the table. So that's sort of the level they're at. They are third place Europa League group stage in that ilk. So they're they're not world beaters, but they're not terrible as well so they deserve to be in the second round qualifier anyway and uh, looking at their formation they played 4-3-3 against Jurgarden last week they played two inverted wingers uh, Tokmak Gwen seems to be the danger man for them he scored uh, both their goals in the game against Jurgarden Frank Bolly is the name of their center forward he doesn't seem to be that big of a danger man only scored 10 goals in the Hungarian league last year so he's not someone that you're really looking at as a real threat to the Celtic defense but the fact that they're playing inverted wingers will probably play into Neil Lennon's starting lineup as well. So going forward, Celtic played a different team against Dundee United than they did against KR Reykjavik. They changed from El Ahmed at right back to Jeremy Frimpong. James Forrest, who was quite poor against KR Reykjavik, dropped out of the team. Ryan Christie moved to the right-hand side and Olivia and Cham came into that number 10 position. I would say that Neil Lennon is probably going to switch back. He's going to go with Barkas and goal again. He has been pretty pretty, pretty solid, as, as good as you expect him to be um, for a keeper that came in for that sort of money. So he's going to be starting goal. I think that El Ahmed is going to come back into this team because of the way that Tokmak Gwen, who seems to be their danger man according to the local journalists in Hungary, he likes to stay up as an almost a forward as opposed to a winger. So I think Neil Lennon will want that extra cover that El Ahmed provides instead of Jeremy Frimpong going across the back. Again, near Beton started in centre back with Chris Julian. I would say that's going to be the same again today or the same again tomorrow. And at left back, you have Greg Taylor. Pretty solid defensive performance against Dundee Dundee didn't really provide any threats going forward so there's not much you can read into it I suppose the fact that Jeremy Frimpong is coming in and out of the team might be frustrating for him but if Neil Lennon needs that extra cover then it's probably best to start El Ahmed who has been defensively solid uh, in midfield you're going with Cal McGregor and Scott Brown again controlled possession, controlled the passing, controlled the pace of the game quite well against Dundee and then in the three forward midfielders you're looking at, I think James Forrest will come back into this team. And the reason being is that Celtic looked a little bit out of shape against Dundee going forward when it got to that right-hand flank. They didn't really have much killer instinct going into the box. Ryan Christie likes to cut it onto that left foot of his. And I, Jeremy Frimpong was getting forward, but they just couldn't get that pass away. So I think James Forrest will come back into this team and provide width for Celtic going forward against uh, Fern Farros. I think Olivier and Cham will drop out of this team again. A little bit harsh on him. I thought he was excellent against Dundee. And he's one of these players, he's almost sort of a luxury at this stage. His foot, feet work is amazing. His passing range is amazing. But he just lacks that little bit of discipline that Ryan Christie would have in that number 10 position getting back and helping the likes of Cal McGregor and Scott Brown when they're not in possession. And again, again, I think it's going to be El Unusi starting on the left-hand flank. He should have a little bit of fun against Ferenc Varos, I think, because by the sounds of it, they play their inverted wingers quite high and they don't tend to track back as much as you would like them to do in Europe. So if that is the case, then the danger men should be James Forrest and El Unusi, they should 
be getting on the ball. We should be getting the ball out to them wide quickly and getting balls into the box to Odzenero Edward, who's going to start up front. I don't think uh, Ajeti is going to start in this game. He might come off the bench again. Good killer instinct when it came to getting that goal against Dundee. And I suppose that's, that's a good sign when your sub striker is coming off the bench. He's not quite fit enough, but he just provides that little bit of killer instinct, that good finish that we needed going into that game because it, it didn't look like uh, Celtic were going to score against Dundee at all. So good to see him getting off the mark. And I would say he'll probably come off the bench again this uh, this Wednesday night. So in this game, one-legged affair. Celtic need to start quick again as they did against Kara Reykjavik. They don't need to take anything for granted. They should boss the game like they did against Dundee. I think that was the key point. There was I know it was only a 1-0 win against Dundee, but it was nice to see Celtic going out and bossing it and showing that they are the champions, controlling possession, controlling the pace of the game. I think Celtic had 75% possession against Dundee at one point in time, so that's probably what you want to, to see them to, to do against Frank Varos again, but obviously Frank Varos are that are a much higher step up than Dundee United are. But ultimately Celtic should have enough to get past this team who finished third in the Europa League group stage and are in a league that is a step below the Scottish League. So I am predicting a solid Celtic win. I would say it won't be as high a scoreline as it was against Kerr Reykjavik as it is a better opponent. So I'm hoping Celtic will come home with a 2-0 win. I don't think they're going to concede against this team. Their centre forward just doesn't seem to be the danger man and El Ahmed and Greg Taylor should be able to handle their inverted forwards quite well. So I think Celtic will come out of here with a clean sheet and get into the third round qualifier. What do you think? How do you think Celtic are going to get on? Let me know in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I will be going through more Celtic stuff all across the season. So if you're a Celtic fan, give me a subscribe, like the like the video and comment below. I'm Enda Call. This has been Colleen. Thanks for watching.